I had some tough nights out there, bro. I really felt depression. Like I loved basketball so much that I wasn't willing to let anything break me, even though I already felt mentally broke. They asked me too long. Your mom never fails to tell me not going to class, distractions were crazy, not taking life seriously. It was just tough for me, man, because the environment was very chaotic. Getting a big contract like that, did you feel pressure? Ooh, he just <laughs> threw me on the spot. So what sticks out to me is that you're already on year seven. Wow. And, and that's crazy. Let people that don't know you, obviously, let them know, let them know like where you've played. Cause I mean, you did a stint in the NBA. You did a stint in the G League. Where else? Um, so I came out of uh, college at Iowa State University, and I did my first two years with the Utah Jazz. Uh, for whatever reason, there's a connection there, and it's you know they treated me well there. I did it two years on a two way, um, and then from there I went to the Indiana Pacers, first class organization. Taught me a whole bunch. Some really good friends I have still today. Um, two years there on a two way. And then um, my corner, myself, my agents, we thought it was time to just make the jump over to uh, uh, Brescia. And that's a small town in Italy, but full of pride, love their team, real culture, real passionate. Yeah, nah, and it looked like a vibe out there. It was a vibe, bro, mm -hmm. like food, people, community, yeah. the whole nine. It was everything I could have ever asked for as far as a first overseas year experience. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, in the same league, uh, the top team was Olympia Milano, and I was very blessed to stay healthy that year and have a productive year. And I made the jump to Olympia and, and played in the Euro League. And that was uh, this previous year. Okay, dope. So before we get into like what you got going on now, I want to really take it back because honestly, one of the main reasons that I brought you on this podcast, because to me, you represent um, the phrase like keep going or never letting your dreams die. Appreciate because it. obviously I know you personally and you in your basketball career and in life, that you've been through a lot of ups and downs, but you keep on going. And I think, honestly, I believe when um, your dreams die, you die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you keep that alive. And that's one of the main reasons that I, I brought you here today. Yeah. But I do want to bring it back um, to around your grade nine and grade 10 year. When the environment uh, was different, you were still in Mississauga and there's a lot of distractions and your mom never fails to tell me that at that time, Naz was, not going to class, distractions were crazy, not taking life seriously. Talk a little bit about that time. Um, that, was a, that was a very particular time in my life because I, uh, I was a kid, you know, um, but I was very blessed to run into, the, you know, the, the group of friends we got. Mm -hmm. um, you guys were young men who had tons of experience on and off the court with all things, mm -hmm. and you guys embraced me as if, I was your age, yeah, you know, no, literally. you know what I'm saying? And them experiences on and off the court allowed me to grow up a lot quicker than the typical 13 year old. Um, but because of that, it molded me into the person that I am. Right. And uh, it gave me experiences and times that I wouldn't trade for anything. Um, but it was it was it wasn't easy off the court because I was just so in love with basketball that all I wanted to do was hoop. I just wanted to watch y'all play, mm -hmm. and then I just wanted to go handle business on the court myself. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to do anything else. Um, it's not that I had a knock for education. When I did show up to class, I was very attentive, um, but it was just tough for me, man, because the environment was very chaotic. You know the, yeah. you know the yeah. high school we yeah, went yeah. to, um, and I gave into that, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I needed those experiences and needed to navigate my way through it or else I wouldn't be who I am today. So, um, <laughs> man, I don't know. Yeah. Hardly going to class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, all we did was hoop, bro. Hoop. All we did was hoop. Other stuff <laughs> yeah. and hoop. And hoop and uh, hoop. Honestly, why I brought that up, because I wanted to ask you, how important is environment to your success now that you left? Environment, it's a, it's a big role. You know, it's a big role, um, especially if you're trying to find your your way as a human being, mm -hmm. you know, your foundation, your soul, like what you believe in. You get what I'm saying? If you don't have a concrete corner behind you and people who are there to guide you, your environment will influence who you become. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm very thankful and blessed to have and have had a, a very strong corner um, from all facets. Like I just ran into the right people, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
because a typical person that was doing what I was doing at 13, yeah, yeah, yeah. it would have been over for them. And I, I don't want to get it confused like you were the only one doing it. We were involved in the same type of things, but I just believe like our, just collectively our environment was a little bit toxic, right? Yeah. And we were still finding our way at the time. So like it's not it wasn't I just wanted to clarify it wasn't yeah. just you. Yeah, no, no, no. It was it was typical teenager boys, you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Just trying to literally live and enjoy life and navigate who we were and who were we were going to become as young men. Like it's not I wouldn't if I took myself out of my body and I looked at us as a whole, I wouldn't have knocked us at all. Yeah, all I would 100%. have said is these guys are ambitious young men, super talented, a core group and family who love each other and they're just trying to find and navigate their way. Maybe needed a little bit of guidance, yeah, a little yeah. more guidance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But you know, we didn't have those things around yeah. us like it was us trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, we look at ourselves now, we still got the same friends, mm -hmm. we still got the same group, we're still all doing, you know what I mean, things that are productive. So to me it worked. Yeah, we're 100% worked out. Yeah. So you leave at 15 or 14? Nah, I left at, yeah, I left at 15. 15? Yeah, yeah. So, because I always talk about it with you off camera, and I'm like, yo, like, you really never had a home since 15 years old. Yo, that's wild. Yeah, how does that feel? <laughs> talk about that. When I left, that was the hardest day to this day of my I life. I, rem I remember. I yeah. remember. Yeah. I'll never forget it, bro. Yeah. I'll never forget it. And you know why? It was because it was just so sporadic. Like, mm -hmm. it went from an idea... To so so next day, get your shit ready and you're out. We're out. Yeah. There's motion. There's yeah. real motion to this. And this is not no regular school. Like we talk about Montrose Christian. We're talking about some greats. You know, mm -hmm. I, all I need to do is name one. And that's Kevin Durant. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's not like where we come from. It's the gutter gutter. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like we don't we never had no big name brand outlets to go no. reach out to for resources or have them put us on because we're there. You know, what I mean, those are our OGs and mm -hmm. stuff like all of our OGs are local legends and those guys could have played, but we didn't have yeah. all the accesses, the you know, and substances that people have and opportunities. So, mm -hmm. bro, it literally went from, I'm doing whatever I want, whenever I want, <laughs> coming home whenever I want, <laughs> just hooping to, I'm going to a Christian school. Yeah. You gotta get your act country. together quick. I gotta whip it up, bro. Mm -hmm. So I remember I left the house um, and I was pulling out the driveway and you were there. All the, all the bros was there. Mm -hmm. The family was there. That was there. emotional time, too. Uh, we were all, there was yeah. like 30 people on the lawn crying, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. I just had to watch all you guys cry. And I was like, and I'm not a super emotional guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm just not. Um, but I was emotional that day, bro. Mm -hmm. And I was emotional for that whole year, I feel like. Mm -hmm. So that was a dark, dark time. But like, they always say, you know, the darkest times bring out the best in your future. You know what I mean? 100%. 100%. So, so you go to Montrose, and I know, I remember from the, correct me if I'm wrong, it was a strict process at that school. Bro. Like, they whipped you into <laughs> shape quick. So you got, you Yo. went from doing whatever you want back home to going straight to school and, okay, let's get it together. Yo, like, I, I, I'm a, I'll, I'll give some examples. Like, um, you know, you know my dad, right? Mm -hmm. Very strict on his diet, right? So yeah. I, it's not like I needed juice or anything like that, mm -hmm. but... In the house that we lived in, no snacks were allowed in your room, right? I was in a basement. I lived with four, six, seven guys, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. two of which are in the league right now. Um, and there was, like, garbage bags over the window, no juice in the room, no but snacks in the what room. What was the purpose of the garbage bags over the window? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, Whoa. bro, I had a lot of questions for the way things were ran. But at the end of the day, like, I'm a 15-year-old kid trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And whatever the case may be, I'm just, the only thing in my mind is I need to make this work. Yeah. So I'm not questioning the no snacks in the room. If the bed's not made, by the time you leave the crib, you're going to run until you throw up. Like, it's over for that. There's no facial hair. Your shirt must be tucked in. No earrings. Yeah. Must be at church twice a week. Um, study hall. Bro, not going to school and not doing the things that, I mean, doing the things that we were doing in high school over here was not an option yeah. over there. You know what I'm saying? So, back home quick. It's over. Yeah. It's over. That tuition for that school was high level, bro. So I was very blessed and fortunate enough to get a scholarship to take care of it. But... They're paying that money, bro. So mm -hmm. they want to see that investment take and off. And if it doesn't, and perform. You got to perform or mm -hmm. else you're out of there, mm -hmm. you know? So I had some tough nights out there, bro. Some real tough nights. I really 15. felt depression, yeah. At 15. At 15. Talk, talk about that even, even more because you just mentioned it. Um, 
depression at 15. Yeah. What is your mind going through? Is it like, yo, are you questioning yourself? Like, is this for me or do you want to quit? Or is it like, man, I just wish my people were out here kind of thing. Like, what is it? What's going on there? Honestly, Coop, like the only thing that was getting me through, the only two things that was getting me through was our corner yeah. and was the game. Mm. Like, I loved basketball so much that I wasn't willing to let anything break me, even though I already felt broken. mentally broke, mm -hmm. you know, but I knew there was a purpose for it. I knew there was a reason for it. And it's kind of like the thing we was talking about earlier in regards to the environment. Mm -hmm. Well, the first day I walk into the gym, I name drop just yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, Justin Anderson, mm -hmm. he was the number one ninth grader in the country. The dude was 6'6 six, six at ninth remember, grade yeah, yeah, going yeah. through the legs. Mm -hmm. As soon as I walk in, he went through the legs. Following up behind him was Terrence Ross, 360 mm -hmm. Whitmill. Following up behind him was Josh Harrison, who's an agent now for Clutch. He was a guy. He went to Duke. Yeah, yeah, he was he a guy. He was a guy, and he is a guy. Yeah, exactly. And the reason he was exactly. a guy is the reason he's in this position now. Like, these are three guys that I'm walking in the gym seeing 6'6 six, six plus, and I'm like, bro, I have never seen nothing like yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I knew that this is what I needed to be around in order to be great. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't letting nothing, even though I was super close, mm -hmm. I wasn't letting nothing break yeah. what the opportunity Completely. was. Yeah, I couldn't. True. So in hindsight, 2020 vision now, it's, it's a lot easier to look back at things and say, oh, I could have done this or I should have done this. Obviously, you don't have any kids right now, but how do you feel about sending your kid or your child potentially away at 15? Would you do it? Would you not? Like, what, what do you even think about that now? Being like going through what you've been through. Yeah. You know, this is super dope, by the way, because like <laughs> just so everybody knows, like this is not scripted. Yeah, I did not, not see the questions before. So shout out to you for doing this. Yeah, no worries. Um, Based off of my experiences, I felt a lot of pain. I had a lot of tough nights, um, but bro, that made me me, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I thank the higher power that I'm comfortable in the skin that I'm in. Mm -hmm. And I'm very blessed and fortunate enough to be in this position I'm in. Um, but it wasn't easy, you know? I, I think I would, if anything at most, maybe 16, 17 would be ideal. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, if it was the exact same situation, if my son was me, yeah, I would have sent him off maybe even damn near a year earlier. True. Cause because even the attitude too, right? I need to fix him, bro. Yeah. And I'm not afraid to say that. I got to show humility, bro. I needed to get whipped into shape as far as like, yo, you don't have an option. The only option is you're going to make it here or it's over. Mm -hmm. um, and if my son was acting like how I was acting, I'd have sent him off the same way. Word. The same way, bro. Because it, it literally built me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I got a big family, yeah. you know, and I have older siblings, um, but the younger ones were the ones really looking up to see yeah. what's going on. Exactly. And my little brother went on to do the same thing. And I'm so thankful that I could go through the pain I went through to make it just a little bit easier on him, you know, sure. not saying it was easy for him, but at least I could give him a little bit of guidance. And on his dark nights, obviously my mother and father, you know what I'm saying? But he could reach to somebody like, yo, bro, this is what's going on. How did you deal with it? Bang. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This is it right here and you're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And, and shout out to your parents, too, because they obviously had to see something in you to be comfortable to even send you off before sure. you seen it in yourself. For sure. Nah, for sure. You know what's funny about that, though? Like you want again, you're 110 percent correct. If my mom or father wanted to shut it down, they could have done it. Um, but my mom didn't want me to go. Yeah, but she that, that's a mother son thing. I get you know, that. To be you honest. know, yeah. she she did she didn't want me to go because she wanted her boy to be here. Yeah. But she knew I needed to go. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, but she was there every step of the way. Um, my father knew he wasn't even like he was like, yo, out of here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's my pops. You know, but um, yeah, they were strong for that. They were very strong, and it's funny because if you ask them how they felt about that, my dad will be the first one to say like. He low key wishes that he kept me around a little longer, mm -hmm. but he knows that I needed to go. Yeah, you know true, what I'm saying. True. So, so after Montrose, you end up at Finlay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And why I even bring up Finley Prep because I believe that was the one of the first um, positions that you've been in where you had to sacrifice and still have a good attitude. And what I mean by sacrifice, you came into a school that. 
you thought you were it was going to go one way mm. and it necessarily didn't go the way maybe how you wanted mm. but you still kept a good attitude how did you learn to do that so young um yo again it's crazy because like you brought up the idea of environment and to this point right now like it's it's kind of made me realize how important that was bro mm -hmm. um i went to montrose christian and I didn't have a great year. I didn't have a terrible year, but it was a decent year. You're you know? figuring out your game that, at that time. I'm trying to figure it out. And mm -hmm. I'm around greats. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm around dudes who know what's going the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I'm like, damn, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to get comfortable in practice with these guys. You know what I'm saying? And um, and so that was a humbling experience right there. And then when I went to Finlay Prep, like, if anyone knows Finlay Prep, I mean, it's a little throwback. Now they had like the YouTube series called The Season. Yeah, and yeah. that was like, YouTube series before YouTube was even really gone in like that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. and because of that, like I went to Finlay and it was Nick Johnson. Yeah. Um it Bennett. was Anthony Bennett, my brother, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's my dog right there. Number one, Nick Johnson, top ten, Mike Cabongo, number one point guard in the country, Winston Shepard, Jeez. top whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. power forward, bro. Landon Lucas went to Kansas, Nigel Williams Goss, like bro, we had nothing you got a squad. But Bro, nothing but top 20 players, mm -hmm. a squad. Mm -hmm. So who am I to walk in here knowing I just struggled the year before, still having a lot to learn, coming in here demanding something? It was not that. Yeah. Um, I thank God for my brother AB because it was a package deal. Let's just call it a spade a spade. It was a package deal. They wanted him. AB was the most prolific player yeah. of our time in yeah. Canada, them times. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No negotiations. And because of him, I had an outlet to go there. I was the last dude off the bench. But I was working them in practice, mm -hmm. and that built my confidence so much because I'm like, yo, if these are the best in this environment, and I'm doing what I got to do, and I'm working just as hard, if not harder than a lot of them, and I'm running at them behind the scenes, at some point, it's going to show. 100%. So it allowed me to just stay humble, you know what 100%. I mean? 100%. Because I believe in the situation that you're in, there's a lot of players that is a big crossroad that can make or break you. For you can sure. look at coach like, oh, coach doesn't rock with me. He doesn't like with me, blah, 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 blah. We all hear those stories. Mm. But you chose to channel your energy and be like, okay, I'm not getting play time, playing time in the real game, so I'm going to take this playing time to practice and let it be known that I'm, I'm here for a reason. For right? sure. So I even got to ask you, for young players coming up or parents that may watch this, how do you – what type of words of advice do you give to younger players that may be in the same type of position? You know, first and foremost, I would say um, it's bored. It's not I don't want to say it's tougher than what we had or even more particular what you had. It's tougher in a different way as far as like generation goes. You cool. know what I'm saying? What like, mean? what do you mean? These kids are dealing with social media yeah, and that's like different. That's that's tough. Fam, it's, it's you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you got to deal with you're forced to watch somebody else's pockets. You yeah. know what I mean? You're yeah. forced to to open your phone and, and look at these things. I mean, you don't necessarily have to, but this is the generation that these kids are dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. like my advice, honestly, would be straight tunnel vision if you're about your craft and you're about your business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you really love something, no if, ands, or buts, nothing's about to stop you from getting to what you need to get to. 100%. And the things that you learn being the last guy off the bench is something that the first guy off the bench at such a young age will never know. Mm. That's just like people in the trenches. You and know what I'm saying? And that builds character too. Builds character, bro. 100%. So I, I, honestly, my, my one advice would be hard work beats talent. Mm -hmm. And there are some talented people who are going to beat the outworkers. But though, if you continue to work hard and persevere, you're going to make it somewhere 100%. and it's going to be lucrative. 100%. So you got to work and lock in on that tunnel vision for sure. That would be my advice. 100%. Yeah. So after Finlay Prep, you come back home, right? Mm -hmm. You go to St. Martin's. You had a good year. Yeah. I remember that year. And then you go to Iowa State. Yeah. Your first year, as I remember, you, di you didn't play that much. Right. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's rookie year. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know you can edit it. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to talk about St. <laughs> Martin. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how... Uh, yeah. Huh. He reverted back to not going to class. Me what? coming to pick him up and like being like, "Wait, what? He's still upstairs?" Because his dad didn't know he was sleeping. Yo. I come to the house like, yeah, "You have to come Yo. to school, yeah. or they're gonna kick you out of school. You're not gonna graduate. You have no scholarship." Yeah. He needed like, Yo, he needed like I two did credits not know that because I'm in college sometimes. Right. He soon needed, you, he needed soon English, you, university English, yeah, and like one or two other credits. It was math. 
He needed like, but he needed like, yeah, he needed like two or three credits. But he was sleeping. He was not try. He would not have got his credits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shout out to my brother Amir. Yeah. My, first name, my, last name. My high school sure. coach. He brought something up, and I didn't know this actually because at the time you're at St. Martin's. Yeah. I'm at Sheridan, so yeah, yeah. I'm not really focused on your everyday. You got your motion. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's going on, right? So I didn't know when you came back. Your basketball career, it like. When you came, you had all the hype around mm. when it came to on the court. Mm. But then you reverted back to the old ways of school. Mm. Why do you think that happened? And again, is that environment? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I just about to say it, bro. It's crazy how, like, again, we did not prep for this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the energy in the universe is just going to bring out the real when you're around authentic people and yeah. you're speaking about what you need to talk about, you know? So, like... I came back home because, you know, by the grace of the higher power and the hard work, like I finally got a scholarship offer and it took my last AAU tournament to get my only scholarship offer after I got one in my sophomore year pulled. Cool. You know what I'm saying? So bang, I get that. Um, so I'm cool with it. I'm like, yo, I've been home away from home for two years. I want to go home and hoop in front of my people and let them know like, yo, I've been working. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've been really, really working. So at first it was, you know, let's go back to Father Michael Gates and turn it up over there. But I wanted to go to a place where I was bringing the bros with me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I had four of my bros, 93 guys. And I was like, yo, they need opportunity too. If they don't get a shot or, or let into a school or get allowed to hoop, like God knows what they're going to end up doing. So For sure. I went to Gates. They were willing to take me, but they weren't willing to take the guys. So, um, you know, through our mutual friend and mutual coach, Amir Morgan, um, he said, yo, listen, come to St. Martin's. We'll take care of that. You know, our, 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 our uh, principal, Mr. Fuge, that's my shout out. Shout out to <laughs> Mr. Fugiarelli, bro. This got to be in there, all three cameras for yeah. sure. Because it's people like him that allow people like myself and people like Amir to, to function. And He's a good person, genuine. Bro, that guy's the guy, mm -hmm. bro. Like the way he just wanted to see people hoop and be, see people in the gym. Like, yeah. And it's crazy how the school system kind of did him in regards to his... But that's a whole next, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Fuge for real. Um, so they welcomed us. And what it was is is the environment, bro. I came back home and I was on top of the world. I had a scholarship. I'm like, listen, I'm coming here to hoop. I'm not coming here for school, bro. Mm -hmm. We're going to figure that out. But that wasn't who I was for these past two years. So I came back thinking I was a man. But in reality, when we look back at that, it's like, bro, you were so far from a man. Yeah. And, um, and it took time, but with the guidance of my father, with the guidance of Amir, with the guidance of the special people in my corner, we were able to get through that year and get those credits. The guys that came in, got all their credits, graduated high school. That's a big deal, bro. 100%, like, especially we, where we come from. Like, people weren't doing school like that, to Imagine think about that. I technically, technically never graduated high school because I never did my 40 hours. Did you know that? I technically, I yeah. <laughs> I didn't do my fourth. Yeah, so technically, camera, I did not graduate <laughs> hey, high school. Hey, so we're, le <laughs> we're letting everything go this podcast. So technically, uh, I didn't do the 40 hours. And again, it just goes back to the environment thing that we are talking about. I just believe even hearing about the St. Martin's thing, this is the first time I'm hearing all that, to be That's honest me, with you. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, like, man, it's tough. Do you think home is just too comfortable? It's too much. And plus, when you come home now, you're an automatic legend because we haven't seen you for a couple years. Right, right. So is it a time that you think you can just like get lazy? Yeah. Yeah. You can get lazy um, for sure. Especially again, like, bro, our group, we was fast living. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we didn't have the typical life of teenagers, bro. So it's like it's easy to get caught in that fire and, and it's fun. 100%. Like, we're not thinking about marriage them times. Yeah, we're not yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. about <laughs> girlfriends. We're not thinking about... Or we're thinking about hooping and having fun, you know, so it's easy to fall into that category. Um, with that being said, like, I firmly believe this, like this has been a Toronto and a Canada type. I mean, I should say GTA. Yeah. If you can make it out to GTA, bro, for sure. you can make it anywhere. Yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying? For so sure. shout out to all the people who stayed home and got their stuff cracking from the crib, you know, because God knows I don't want to diminish my hard work because I was working hard regardless. But. It could have easily been south 100%. because of the environment, you know? 100%. So, yeah. So you got that Iowa State scholarship. 
And uh, back to what I was saying before, the first year you didn't play, but you're a rookie. That happens no, pretty, like uh, normally. Right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then second year, you started to, you, you went in as a, you want to be a point guard, right? Yeah. And then second year, you play, I think you started at the point. Yeah. And then it kind of switched. Then that's when uh, Monte came, right? Yeah. And I felt like, again, that was another sacrifice that you made. You didn't bitch about it. You didn't sulk. And you took the role and you ran with it. Talk yeah. about that. Um, Honestly, so I didn't play. So I played in, uh, I think I scored 26 points my freshman year. So I didn't play. But I had five fifth-year seniors who, on my, you know what I mean? They were my big bros them yeah. times. You know what I'm saying? Now they're friends. Um, and honestly, they're... The rivals, like I, I play against some, you know what I mean, and uh, I, I lean on them a lot for some things that I that I need. So, I was okay not playing my freshman year, and I had an interview actually with Anthony um, for uh, North Pole Hoops. Shout out to North Pole Hoops, and I said it like my first year, I'm not really expecting to go in there and just kill off rip. I gotta learn. I'm one of those guys who it takes a little, you know what I mean, to Time. learn, and then I, I, I just I'll, I'll get in there, you mm-hmm. know. So, that first year was 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 cooks and. Um, the second year came and I talked to Fred Hoiberg and I was just like, yo, I have to play. I'm not here to just enjoy the college life. Like, I really love this game. What do I got to do? And he's like, we need shooting. We're losing Tyrus McGee. We're losing Chris Babb. We're losing Will Clyburn. We're losing Corey Lucius. We need shooting. Um, and if you're willing to do that, we have some good point guards coming in. We'll, 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 get, we'll make it to work. And I was such in a pursuit for stability of just being in one place that I was like, cool, mm-hmm. I'll shoot. Mm-hmm. And that Cause summer- Cause you didn't really want to sh- be the, the shooter. It was never me, bro. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I could always shoot, yeah. but like, it was like, I wasn't a catch to and that, shoot yeah, shooter. Exactly, exactly. And a transition layup, man. Like yeah. I had game, like all of us have game, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, but I just wanted stability so bad cause I hadn't had it for at that point, that's like what, three, four years. Yeah. Um, that I was willing to do whatever to just stick. And thankfully I had, you know, my brother George um, as my roommate and I loved him to death. Our freshman class was super dope. Um, I built great relationships and I was, I was humbly accepting of the position. So yeah. that's how it went. So obviously it's a team sport. So it sounds like you had to maybe let, let go of your ego sure. a, a, a bit because you won three championships there yeah. and you guys did well. Yeah. You, yeah. you guys had a legendary run, yeah. right? So I want to even talk about that sometimes that I feel like what you did there is a life skill. Yeah. Like you may not get your way a lot of the times, but if you're involved in, let's say, a work environment or a team, that that's a transferable skill because you let your ego down knowing that you could probably be in the position that you want to do be, but the coach seen it different. So you did it for the role of the, t- the good of the team. Yeah. Right. So I want to talk about like how your ego was, n- was handled in a way that didn't affect other people. Um, it, it was, it was done for the greater good of the team, for sure. I loved the guys on the team. I, I, I was the guy who was cool to everybody on the team. You know 100%. what I mean? So it was really easy for me to just put and my you pride aside. a good attitude. That's Trust the me. main thing. Right, right. And, and the reason I did that is because I was humbled when I went to Montrose. You know, I saw what greatness was and I, I was always told by my father, like, just be where your feet are. You know what I mean? And, and really accept who you are as a man. Elaborate on that. That's a good Like, one. just be where your feet are as far as like, be real with yourself. Like, People look in the mirror and it's like, when it's just you in that mirror, you can lie as much as you want. But when you lay your head down, you close your eyes, bro, your subconscious mind is going to tell you the truth. Like you can try and run as much as you want. And honestly, if you tell yourself a lie enough, you might believe it, but then your actions are not going to validate it. Mm -hmm. You you know what I'm saying? You're delusional at this point and you won't even know you're delusional, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm very thankful for my father to just keep me grounded and just do the things that he did to just allow me to be myself. Mm -hmm. Um... So I always kept my feet where they were and I just always accepted who I was and I wasn't at the level to try and ask for more, Mm -hmm. you know? I didn't have a prolific freshman year. Um, I didn't have the opportunity to um, be who I fully was on this elite team. Like we were an elite basketball (coughs) club. My Mm -hmm. sophomore year, we beat Michigan. They were top five at the time. We weren't even ranked. And then we were never not ranked for the rest of my career. But we had dogs and we produced a lot of NBA elite talent. So I humbly accepted that. I wanted my my environment to be the elite and I wanted to stick around for it. So that was the easy way of just accepting what was going on. And I knew that at some point 
You're going to get your shot. I'm going to get my shot. It's going to crack open because I'm handling my business as a man, young man. Mm -hmm. I'm working very hard and I'm getting my imprint on the court in a way that I might not like completely. But because of that, I'm going to find my way to get on the court. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find my way to stay on the court and I'm going to find my way to expand my game. Mm -hmm. So that's what my plan was. And in my junior year, things started to kind of crack open for real. You started to go off your junior to senior and then you had a, you had a like, because the hip injury, you had a extra senior year, right? Yeah, yeah. So your Iowa career was super legendary, game-winning shots, and then you go from there and you go G League right yep, away. Yep. And I want to talk. Actually, I want to mention this: your Iowa career because you made the switch and you took what the coach gave you. Again, that's a nu- for me as I see it. That's a another thing where you kept your dream alive. Yeah. You know, because you believed in yourself and you yeah. did not crack or fold because some players they go the other way when they don't get there what they want they're done right and you see that all the time so i wanted to commend you for that Appreciate but you, bro. going on to the g league now you you go on to the g league and from what i remember you have great years in the g league i did yeah. Yeah. and those are another great times in the g league yet not everything was going your way yet again mm-hmm. we're here again mm-hmm. we're, everything's not going your way talk about that a little bit so um so i get in the g league um well first i take a training camp deal right so that off rip now that's not big money by Mm -hmm. any means but to me like i gotta like i don't want to throw numbers out there but i got you know what forget like i got my i got a ten thousand dollar advance you know and that almost was all of what i made as far as my training camp deal just that part and that was my first ten thousand, and they gave it to me in cash (laughs) yeah yeah and i'm like yo like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And um, and obviously there's taxes on it and da 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 You know what I'm saying? Let me just, just in case. Uh, but um, I held that money in my hand and I'm like, okay, bang. This is what five figures is. And I like it a lot, you know? And this is what my hard work is going to get me if I just stay the course on the way I've been doing it. So I get into the G League after I get cut, after my training camp deal. And we had the worst team in the G League, but... I had, and I was coming off the bench to start. Yeah, I remember. But I had it in my mind. I'm like, I'm not taking no L's. I'm not taking no L's in this situation, bro. I'm going to get it. I don't care how, I don't care how long. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I worked so hard. Mm -hmm. And the Jazz saw that. Uh, Dennis Lindsay, who was the GM at the time, brought me into his office. And he's like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. We have an amazing roster, which they did. They had Donovan Mitchell as a, as a young star. Mm-hmm. Um, they had Rodney Hood, who was elite. Rudy is who he is, elite. Joe Ingles, bro, they had the roster. You know what I mean? And he said, look, we're good. Um, we're not necessarily looking for guards, but we see what you're doing down there. And you're averaging 15, 16. You're working hard every day and you got a good attitude. We're going to put you on a two-way contract and just put some money in your pocket. Wow. And, um, and they did that. They did that for me, man. And that's when I, I hit my six figure amount. Mm-hmm. And it, it really, that's when I was like, oh, okay. Just be a decent person yeah. and keep working hard. So, literally, what I'm hearing right now is that your attitude just got you paid. Literally. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, my attitude got me paid. I mean, don't get me wrong. No, you can't be a, you know what I'm saying? No. But I'm not disrespecting sure. your game. No, 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 not but even. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's but just, you know. Your hard work. Yes, of mm-hmm. course. Mm-hmm. Had you not had the attitude that you've built up over the years from the trials and tribulations, you might have not got that deal. Cook, bro. It would have been over, bro. <laughs> They're like, who do you think? You're on the worst team in the G League. Yeah. They use the G League to just work out the main guys. Yeah. You're in the G League with an attitude on the worst team. Are you, bro, if I took myself on my body and I seen that, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That investment is terrible to yeah. even think about. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're right, bro. The attitude saved me for real. Jeez. Okay. So we're at the G League now. And here's the thing. Since we're kids, we all have dreams of oh, NBA, 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 yeah. right? That's all we see. Yeah. Especially in your case, the NBA was a very realistic dream and goal. Actually, it's not even a dream anymore. It's become a realistic goal. Mm-hmm. Okay. You make it there. Then you decide to go to Europe. Was that a tough decision to make? considering your whole life you've been waiting for this one moment it wasn't at that time i was ready Uh, honestly i was ready a year earlier Mm -hmm. um i can't for whatever reason i was thinking about it because i knew it was going to get to this point i can't remember if covid i'm pretty sure covid was active and they figured out a bubble situation for the g league on my fourth year true had that not happened i would have went overseas a year prior true um 
And I was ready, bro. Like, that's why I tell any young guy who's talking to me about two ways and da 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 da. I always say to them, yo, just go chase that dream while you're young. Mm -hmm. But just be mindful and cautious of when you're overdoing it. It's too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I think I am overdid it a year. Um, with that being said, it prepped me and prepared me for me to have the year I had in Brescia. Yeah. Um, but when I was you, ready. Sorry, not to cut you off. When you say overdid it, are you thinking more of money or the or your body or your, when you're in your prime? No, I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking I'm getting into the league. That's all. I'm not I'm not going overseas. Like I'm I'm overdoing chasing the dream because I don't understand the business and how important time and situation is. True. And I felt like I was so close because I was killing the G League. Because you have like an age threshold too, right? You get me? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's 110%. Like, bro, we got, they got 18-year-old kids who they're going to take the chance on that if he has all the intangibles yeah. and all the accolades. It's a business investment. You know? True. Like, it's, it's a business investment. But I didn't get that then because my mentality, all I knew was work. Mm -hmm. And the hard work got me past some of the guys who used to be the best. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking if I keep working, 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 it's going to crack. Now, that that is a good route, and typically that does happen, but it's timing and situation and circumstance that can also influence what goes on. Fair. So you know what I mean? That's that's why I mean I think I overdid it by a year because it took a year to realize, okay, yo, bro, there's low-key nothing you can do. There's a year mm -hmm. I was averaging like 17 and a half, yeah, damn near 18. Yeah, you were doing 18. everything. I was killing, yeah. bro, triple doubles, like da-da-da. And I say this humbly because... Mm -hmm. Across the G League, there's guys doing it everywhere. It's yeah. not just me. Eh? Yeah. I'm not by head and heels over everybody. There's a large group of people who are in the G League killing it, mm -hmm. but they're not getting their up because the situation doesn't fit their time, you Fair. know? So Fair. that's when I knew it's time to go. Fair. And I was at peace with that, and that's when we made it happen. Fair. Yeah. So you made the jump to overseas. You... Uh, started to play at Brescia, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And to me, that was the first year I could say that I seen you play how you wanted to play. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. probably ever. <laughs> Yo, ever. Facts. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah, you know, facts. just simply, like, you did what you wanted to do, and it was a good league. And yeah. you killed that year, right? Yeah, yeah. So now, you got a good contract from them. Mm hmm you're at the highest of highs. You're feeling a high after that season. You 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 guys did stuff that they didn't expect, right? Right, <laughs> for sure. Like you brought that team to a place that they didn't expect, and mm -hmm. they're still riding off that wave today, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. So now you're at the highest of highs. You're the man. You're doing your thing. Then next, the following year, you go to Milan. Yep. You go to Milan. You start off really good because mm -hmm. I remember that. And then I guess you guys weren't winning as much. Right. You guys weren't winning as much, and then s stuff starts to change yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sacrifice has to come again. Where now you're not you're not playing anymore. Yeah. Take me through that mentally. That time mentally. <sighs> that was tough, bro. That was tough. That was right up there with the Montrose transition. Um, it's like, so for those who don't know, like Olympia Milano is. I mean, top as, tier team. it's top, it's top three organizations in Europe. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, it's top of the line organization, legend, legends left, right, and center. You know, it's, it, it is Olympia Milano. For those who don't know, just search it up and you'll see what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, so I made it there after one year of playing overseas and I'm, I was super thankful, super appreciative, um, very humble to have put on that jersey. Um, and then when the success came in the early stages of my my tenure there, yeah. I was on top of the world as far as like, I can do this. The only stain on it was like, like you know me, like I'm playing to win, bro. I'm yeah. not playing for the stats, you yeah. know what I mean? I want to contribute and by contributing you need stats. Mm -hmm. With that being said, if you're not winning to me, like I'm never the type, like if I go get 30 and we lose, bro, I'm not posting that. Yeah, exactly. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna go watch the film, but the same way I'm gonna watch the film if I go, if I get a goose egg, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I felt like I was on top of the world and I could really contribute to a team that had all the pieces to make it shake, but injuries killed us. Mm -hmm. It killed us. And we went on a real bad losing streak. I was playing really well. No, the, 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 the guys who were supposed to be doing what they were supposed to be doing were still trying to find their way. Um, bad timing, bad timing, bro. Mm -hmm. But amazing dudes, amazing players. It just didn't click. 
because of the injuries, because of the circumstances. And Europe is just hard in general, bro. Mm -hmm. We had 10 preseason games. I tore my quad, missed the first eight games. Like, everybody got injured. So mm -hmm. um, it was right back to the feeling of Montrose and mm -hmm. low point when I stopped playing. Mm -hmm. um, but I had already experienced that before. And that's why I was saying to you, like, I wouldn't trade anything that I had went through because if I didn't go through what I went through it then. It built you for this moment. Fam, this could have killed my career. Mm -hmm. I could have just cashed it in like, hold on. It's like, what you, what? Like, yeah. I'm I'm top five scoring in the Euro League in yeah. the first seven games, but yeah. I'm a rookie. Yeah. How am I not playing anymore? Yeah. But I just accepted and understood what comes with this game. Yeah. And uh, I knew I had things I had to work on. Yeah. So, Milan, you go through another situation and you're not playing again and but again the dream's still alive sure. yet again because sure. again my philosophy is when people let their dreams die they die you know and you keep that going you keep a positive attitude but i want to talk about something else milan was uh, a very big uh, very impactful for you because it was your first really big contract right yeah yeah getting a big contract like that did you feel pressure Yo, I, I didn't. Still. Really? Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I felt no pressure, bro. Like, I I looked at the roster, first and foremost. Shout out my guy, Kevin Pangos. Um, and he was the other point guard that was coming in. And I was like, yo, I KP to me. No, sorry, sorry. What I mean by that is dealing with the amount of money that's coming in now. Uh -huh. Did you feel pressure? Because it's like, what do I do with it? Do I invest? Do I do this? Da, 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 that type of pressure when it comes to the financials. Uh, no, nah, not initially because it hadn't hit. You know what I mean? I, I didn't even see any of it yet. So I'm like, in my mind, humbly speaking, like knowing the things that I've gone through, I felt like, honestly, respectably, like now, if you look at my career and the steps in, that I took, I can't sit here and say I've been deserved it. But the thing that kept me going is like, I felt like, yo, I, this has been uh -huh. like, you know, like, for example, like I, I didn't heard so many successful people say like, or even like rappers and artists are like, you know what I mean? Billionaires, they're like, yo, they believe they were a billionaire and, and successful before they even had it. So, so when it came, like, you already, you manifest that from way before. From so when time. it came, you're like, oh, okay, we're just catching up now. From time, bro. Like you can't live the life that we were living in high school. Yeah, I know. Not expect that later on. And not expect that. If you do, then you're just a straight dummy. Like yeah, you're yeah. just going to be doing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I envisioned this from a you. Like I'm like, listen, I don't know how this is about to shake out, but it's going to. Mm -hmm. So when it came, I was like, cool. This mm -hmm. is nice, you yeah. know? But with that being said, like, I want more, bro. I got nine siblings, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And and a big family and, and nieces and nephews. And this ain't enough, 100%. you know? So, like, I didn't feel pressure. I just, it's like I wanted more. like, yeah. And just, like, right now, like, I want more. Uh, and I guess that was proof that, like, hey, I got this. There's way more out here for me. So this is really doable now, right? S so one thing I noticed, like, off the camera, obviously, we talk a lot. And you just turned 30, right? Yeah. And I noticed for the last year and a half, our conversations have changed. We're talking a lot about life, yeah. about what we want to do when it comes to investment-wise, family-wise, just how we, the type of life that we want to live. Um, why do you think that transition is happening now for you in that type of, like, conversation? Yo, I, I don't, like, literally, yo, leading up to my 30th birthday, I don't know if it's because like there's a number on it. It's the end of a decade and you're like in your mind subconsciously, you're like 30. Bang. You know what I mean? But like leading up to the birthday, bro, I was just like thinking about and feeling. I was thinking about so many different things and feeling so many different emotions. Like it, it's not something you can explain. And I'm not trying to get OD cliche, but like I really felt like my energy was shifting. You know what I mean? Or maybe even your interests were shifting. Not that yeah. you love basketball, but you're like, hmm, okay, I have, I could do this for nine more years, like God given, like, you yeah. know, health, strength, whatever. Yeah. But did you feel like it was your interest? Like you're maybe interested in other things or like, what was it? Yeah. Um. Mm, nothing took away from basketball because I'm going to play this game until the wheels fall off, but I love it that much. It, it literally, I wake up in the morning and like, when it's super early and I smell the smell outside, especially back home, it's so, it's mad weird. It's yeah. like nostalgic, like it's weird. But when I smell the air of the morning, bro, it reminds me of them 5 a.m. wake ups oh, going to yeah. gates. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Them early morning practices. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Bubs. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. those were the ones, you know? And 
and those were the mornings that really got me to get to where I'm at for real. So it's not that that interest shifted. I think if anything, it just brought in my horizon as far as like, look, I'm around these people consistently. And the guys that were on my team last year, I don't know if I've had a more influential team. Um, the they were, in, they were in. Oh, sorry, you're talking about the Milan team. Yeah, I'm talking about the Milan team. They were into business from what I when we were talking. Big business. Yeah. Kevin Pangos again. Shout yep. out to him because that's a Canadian legend. Forever will be. Um, and then Billy Barron. Those were two guys that I got. I was already cool with KP. That's my dog. But then Billy, I got real close with Billy, and those guys are real estate gurus the yeah. way they talk like and playing basketball and it's still involved put in the work the work like mm -hmm. kevin i promise to god like right now i don't know what time it is in italy but yeah. that man's probably on a foam roller right yeah. now you know and billy's probably somewhere rolling out his shoulder you know what i mean like those guys put the work in in all facets and on top of that mm -hmm. they got two both of them got two beautiful children two amazing wives in their corner who hold them down and obviously sacrifice a lot that they do but like to see that foundation and see how they operate in that space as far as business goes off the court, as far as basketball goes on the court, it's like I was inspiring. Bro, I'm like, dog. And I'm going into 30, and there's no better way to finish the decade than to see the things that I want in my life. Mm -hmm. I want those things. Mm -hmm. And that environment had influenced and shifted my mind to look at things environment. in a different there way. Environment, there we go again. Bang, bro. <laughs> like, it's still, that's yeah. crazy, bro. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, we never even talked about environment or none of like this. Like, our conversation's been different. And yeah. then we pull up here and it's like consistency on the environment thing. That's just connected connectivity through the universe. Mm -hmm. Like, these are things that somebody out there needs to hear. Yeah. And we connect on that. So, shout out to those guys for that influence, bro. But I'm, 110% in that space as well as the love for the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and I know the love for the game and the hard work and dedication I put in the game is going to continue to give me those things. For sure. And uh, I wouldn't trade my position for anything right now because of those. For sure. You know what I mean? So I, I do, I've asked this question before and I do think it's a, a tough transition when basketball is finished because you've dedicated mm -hmm. damn near... 20 plus years to this game. Sure. That's all you've ever known. For sure. Um, on the most part. The no, most, no, yeah, no. You're right, part. bro. You're right, and bro. And then it's like, let's say like you played a 30, let's say you play 38, 39, mm -hmm. right? Let's just say. Then it goes, okay, I got to start real life now. Mm -hmm. I got to start, I don't know, maybe you could already have a family, but business, work, what have you. I feel like that could be a very tough transition that a lot of players go through, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And some of them don't, they go far left mm -hmm. where they don't necessarily, they come home and do stupid stuff, mm -hmm. literally. Have you thought about like that transition that you might have to go through uh, in the future? Yeah, you know, that's a realistic, I would be, I would be naive, uh, naive is not the word, but I would be lying if I said I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, because realistically, you're on the back end. Like, I don't know, like, Bron, what's Bron? Is Bron Bron's 40? Four. That's LeBron James, you know? Mm -hmm. And he had hinted at something, and we all knew he wasn't going to retire, but mm -hmm. he hinted at potential retirement at the end of this year, bro. So, and he looks like he can go for, like, another three, four, five, Easily. maybe, you know? Mm -hmm. But this is the arguably the best player of all time. Yeah. So, like, realistically, like, who's playing till 40, mm -hmm. you know? And you know I take care of my body. I'm very strict on that. Yeah. Um. But with that being said, bro, you got to be a realist. You got to be where your feet are. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I definitely had my internal conversations and it's not like I'm looking to retire anytime soon. Um, but I've thought about different things because this ends at a young age and I'm already accustomed to this lifestyle. I'm not knocking no nine to fivers. You know what I mean? Like I respect them times a million because that puts you in a, in a environment to where you have to be so locked in to do that and it's so repetitive that if you can do that that mm -hmm. routine is insane and yeah. you're gonna climb the that's ladder difficult. that way but mm -hmm. that's different like we're not in that space mm -hmm. so um in order to continue to live the life that i want to live i know that i have to think about other things and use the things that i've been blessed with through basketball to get me that life yeah and get my wife my future wife that life mm -hmm. and make sure my kids are good so that's been in preparation since I was 25, since I really started making real money, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, man, definitely brought in my horizons as far as mentality goes. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I always think about it like this, like let's say like to play to 38 is a great career. Like it's a You're great blessed. career. You're blessed. And for the money that you make in that short um, amount of time, like that has to like 
catapult your whole life moving forward, you know? So, yeah. like, with investments, with with whatever you do after, you know? So, I yeah. always, like, again, that's why I asked you the question because I think it's important uh, internal dialogue for players to have when they hit 30 mm-hmm. around that age, depending on their body and what, what have you. So, that's dope that, you know, you're thinking about those things from, like, when you're 25. Another thing, because I'm going to wrap this up soon, is um, a lot of people don't realize that you being overseas – uh, a lot of players deal with mental health, right? And we don't talk about that enough. You guys are in a different country that may not be their predominant language, may not be English. People don't look like you. And yet you're having days, nights by yourself. You're not around your family like that. Yeah, FaceTime is cool, but it's not It's not the same. Mm-hmm. Talk about the mental health aspect that um, we don't talk about enough. Shout out to everybody that's going through mental things and feel like they can't speak to somebody. Um, Complete side note for all this. If you need to get help, um, if you need an outlet, just go do that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have a lot of friends, one of my best friends growing up. um, And I, um, you know, I'm saying I can't even dive too deep on that. Because, again, like I told you, like, I'm not, you know, you know, my if anyone know people in Mississauga know my father, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I am my father's son, you know, and um but that topic right there, you know what I'm saying, is deep, mm-hmm. um, and it's real. And uh, embrace it. Don't be afraid of it. Um, and there's ways to to get help on that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying. So if you feel like you, you know what I'm saying, you got to do that. Do that. You mm-hmm. know, as far as overseas goes, man, it's a challenge. Like, for example, my first week or two weeks in Brescia. Mm-hmm. Um, so bang, I moved to Italy. Um, and I'm blessed, you know, I'm super blessed. It was Italy. Like people are going to Bulgaria, you yeah. know, um, people are going to Russia and I'm, and I'm not knocking Russia. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I heard a lot of mm-hmm. honestly, real yeah. nice things about Moscow. And cause even where Eli was the first time he, that was a little bit rough for him. Um, yeah. Well, he started off yeah. in, in Greece, which was great, but then he went to Bulgaria, Yeah, yeah Bulgaria, which was he, the way he was explaining to me, I was like, damn, fam, I didn't know what you're going through all That's that. That's fam. So yeah, man, like, yo, serious experiences over there. And, uh, my first, my first couple weeks in Brescia, like I touched down, I brought my pops with me. Um, cause he was, you know, shout out to him, man. He's, he's been present in my life and that's more than I could ever ask for, you know? And, uh, he came with me to Italy and bro, like our first week we had no car. We had our crib, which was a, you know, and, Sh- and Brescia is an amazing organization. It's not like I was asked out, um, but bro, we couldn't speak Italian. We can't speak Italian mm-hmm. and we don't read Italian. We don't know what's going on. And when I landed, the whole team was already in Bormio, which is in the mountains doing training camp. So I was a little late. Yeah. So I was pretty much out there dolo yeah. with my pops and yeah. we're just walking the streets and like, yo, the whole first day, all we had was pasta in the cupboard for dinner. And then we, I got a whole loaf of bread. You know, the large breads that you get for like garlic bread. Yeah. I bought a loaf of bread. Um, and I bought a cream cheese thing and I was ripping pieces off the bread and just eating that, you know, and that's not the worst situation to be in, but it's just different. Mm -hmm. And you have to adjust no matter what you got to adjust into some people who come from extreme luxury. Like that might be a low moment for them. And that's something light compared Mm -hmm. to the stories I've heard. And I've been fortunate enough to be in two really amazing spots, but my teammates have some stories of not getting paid on time, not being able to see their families having to stay in Russia, in Russia and not leaving COVID times, they were locked in a whole foreign country. Like mental health in those places are going to get magnified to a different level that people would never understand over here unless you go through it. Yeah. Um, so again, back to what I said initially, I am a product of my father and I am not the most emotional person. And the way I deal with mental health is I look at it as an obstacle um, I've reached for my outlets. You, you're the yeah, same we, way, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's not no knock to nobody exactly. who wants to go out there and reach for help and, and talk to people that yeah. they don't necessarily know. There's scholars out there who have gone to school to help them type of situations. It's just guys like ourselves. Bro, we're going to deal with that. That's mm-hmm. what we come from. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what it will be forever. And I'm not going to force that on my children. I'm going to always let them know that they got an outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, mm-hmm. I, I come from where I come from, Mississauga, just to be very clear about that and the environment I come from with the bros. And uh, and I was able to get through them tough times when I almost broke and could have broke. You know what I'm saying? Fair. fair. Yeah. So, Naz, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's coming with the Mike Tyson right hook. When it's all said and done, 
when it's all said and done, I want to be remembered as somebody who had the best experiences of his life with his family and loved ones. I, love I don't care about nothing else. Mm -hmm. I want to see the world. I want to see my family happy. And I'll leave this earth and, and know that I left a legacy of selflessness through my mother. For sure, for sure. Competitiveness, competitiveness and focus through my father and a family man because of my siblings. Mm -hmm. I just want to be remembered as somebody who, who gave their all into the people that he loved. He gave his all into himself to give himself the best opportunity to max out and somebody who enjoyed his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the way that I see that is traveling the world and experiencing things with the people that I love the most. Not alone, not mm -hmm. alone. You Dope. know, it, it's just not, it doesn't hit the same for me. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's, that's how I'd say it. Dope. So these uh, next two questions, one of them we ask every single guest on the show. And another one is a new segment that I'm bringing to the show. Which so is? the first one, what is the best advice that you received? And what is the worst advice you received? You don't got to say any names. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, you just threw me on the spot. <laughs> the best advice that I've ever received. One, one quote that comes to mind yeah. initially, especially because you just asked me how I want to be remembered, is you truly become a man when you take care of your family. Mm. You know? And mm. that stuck with me OD. Mm -hmm. That stuck with me OD because... It just makes sense. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like 100%. as a man, like you need to be a provider. You need to be a protector. Um, and regardless of what, my, my, my pops was there for that. And uh, he had a tough relationship with his father. And mm -hmm. I never met my grandfather on that side. I never met my grandfather on either side. Um, but because of those things, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, the I would say advice. that's up there. Yeah. Um, be where your feet are is another one. Um, and then another, uh, the final one I'll say, I'll just give three, um, is you got to go through the rain to see the rainbow. And that's a, a quote from Sebastian Telfair documentary through the fire. Yeah, that's a um, big one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shout out to E. He knows about that. Um, but bro, that was like it. That was it. I was like, yo, I got to go through the rain to see the rainbow. I got to mm -hmm. go through the trenches to get to the glamorous life. Like I got to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. Cool. You know what I mean? And then, you know what? I'm gonna give a fourth. I know it's a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, you just no, asked no, for no, one, but... Good. Uh, my brother, George Niang, um, he might still have it in his bio today. Yeah. There's no elevator to success. You got to take the stairs. Ah, I, I think that. that one's wicked, I love too. That. Yeah, I love that one. That's a wicked nah, one. Yeah, that's why I love you that feel one. Me? And even especially, if the stairs, the elevators are working, I'm taking the stairs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Especially even, I, I'm, I'm, um, I like that it comes from George. You know yeah. why? Because he's not your typical, bot, like, athletic type of player, but he worked. I remember him in, in university. He worked his ass off and made sacrifices to get to where he's at today. Exactly. So shout out to George. Shout, shout out, out to, to George. Dude, man. Shout out to that dude. Loves a butter cake, <laughs> but knows when it's time to put that yeah. butter cake up. And then he just got his generational wealth. And he is a the epitome of that quote. You 100%. Know what I'm so shout out to my bro, man. For Worst sure. advice. You don't have to say any names. <laughs> Worst advice yeah, that you can somebody say gave me? <laughs> Worst advice that somebody gave me? Mm, that's, this shouldn't be a hard one, but I'll let you go. You know why it's kind of a hard one, though? Because, like, when I'm hearing bad advice, like, bro, like, I was, again, we were forced to grow up young. So, like, when I'm hearing bad advice, it's just like, yo, bro, what? Bro? Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? You mm -hmm. know, I can't relate to that. So that's not even going to go get stored in my memory bank. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm not True. even trying to sound, like, above it. True. But it's just, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when I, th when I think of, like, the worst advice... It wouldn't be a quote in particular that I can just throw out there, but it would be those guys who like would take the days off. Yeah, fair. You know what I'm saying? Even if they were dumb talented, like mm -hmm. I have a guy in mind right now, like, bro, he would wake up and just start crushing a Coca-Cola bottle and deal with donuts and then go to practice. And don't get me wrong. He's nice. He's dumb, yeah. nice. And he made it. Yeah. He made it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But you know what? At the end of the day, um, he made it and that's great mm -hmm. right because you're always gonna sometimes talent does beat hard work mm -hmm. but i just think it's more of a character thing for real life and the longevity thing to that might 
turn out to backfire yeah. later on. Yeah, you yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Like you're, you're like it's as simple as that. Um, and as you were saying that, bro, I was just thinking of one. You know what? One quote I will say. It's not necessarily somebody said to me. Uh, maybe like around, but like it's spend your bread because you can't take it to the grave with you. Like, nah, bro, <laughs> that's, just, that's stupid. No, you know, no, and, no. And, Why do we have families? Uh, what's your legacy yeah, like you know yeah. that that bang and then that connects to the legacy like i just want to be remembered through my future children 100 percent. and and it's not me through them entirely it's me creating the foundation and them taking it and making it what they believe it is to be Fair. you know what i'm saying Fair. so i think that advice is is foolish yes don't get me wrong like yo enjoy your life spend mm -hmm. your bread for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. but don't spend out of your means exactly. you know what i mean act your wage type exactly. type vibe At you know what i'm saying for when your seeds take care of your foundation and your family bro yeah. that that's the definition of a man a, a father or a mother you know 100%. what i mean for sure I agree. okay so this new segment that we're doing this you're the first time that we're gonna do this, <laughs> this so the last guess <laughs> the last guess i said send me a question to ask the next guest and you're not gonna know who it is and so they sent me a question to ask the oh, that's next sick. Guess, right this guy is sick <laughs> this guy let me hear it out all right so the sick. question so is what was the most challenging but transfer transfer transformative season of your life? Uh, Montrose. Montrose going that first year to the states at fifteen. Not even close. Mm -hmm. Like I had to think. Like I just scanned the other ones. Yeah, it was Montrose. Yeah, it was Montrose, bro. Like. That year, no one will ever be able to understand and feel my pain the same way I wouldn't understand the pain of somebody else, you yeah. know, humbly speaking. That year was serious, yeah. bro. Yeah. One of the first conversations I had with Coach Vetter was like, do you know how to formally set up a table? Wow. And like, I'm ashamed to say it even right now because I should have searched it up <laughs> and noticed, yeah, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But we don't live in 1950 no more. Yeah, yeah. Respectfully, shout out to the OGs. Yeah. Where does the fork go? Where does the knife yeah, go? Where's the steak yeah. knife, the butter knife? Bang, bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? Like, He's teaching you how to be a man. You feel me? At 15. Yeah. And I never knew. Until this day, if I text him right now, he's going to hit me. Yeah. You know? Wow. Um So it was definitely Montrose. I became, after that year, that influence of that year transitioned me to a young man, a better basketball player, and to understand what discipline was. A hundred percent. Montrose. 100%. Yeah. Okay, so... Naz, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. My dog. It's been a long time coming. I know when you come home, obviously you're busy. You got a lot of stuff to do. Um, so again, like this is, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. This was this was a big one. I appreciate it. Um, you're welcome back anytime. You mm -hmm. know, black is new rich. Oh, Amir, you want to say something? I have a camera. Yeah, go ahead. Two things. Yeah. Yes. He was lazy with school. He put up over 500 shots a day. Oh my God. And you, you know. So yo. That like, no, sorry. It was 500 bakes a day. I was about to say. Yeah. 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 There was no shooting machine. Yeah. Yeah, you that, that. that you know who was that, rebounding for me? Who? Like oh. I, <laughs> oh uh. My shoulders, but that was the best, my, best shape my shoulders ever been in, in the life. My shoulders were nice. Nah, yeah. you're the go for that. Yeah, yo, you're to go really, for that. He, no, he worked really super hard. He didn't have to. He averaged a triple double. Yeah. He averaged a triple double. In high school. He was a, he was a man. Yeah, yeah. A month ago when he played again. He was a man. Okay? That's what I knew really. He was, he, he was going to be a pro playing in the NBA. So your work ethic for the basketball was still crazy. Yeah, crazy. that never crazy. changed. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's not get that twisted. Like, through all the BS in the environment and all yeah. that of what I did give into, yeah. nothing was stopping what was going on in the court. Yeah. Our, we had a legendary season at St. Martin's. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah. We lost the first game. We didn't lose for the rest yeah. of the season, yeah. bro. You know, and it was... And they changed worked. the rules because of you, right? Because of now? <laughs> yeah. Rafsa. Rafsa. Why are you hating? Uh, one last thing. One thing that I love that I still tell players right now that I will actually it'll always stay with me even as my kids grow up and go through sports. I went to Dayton when he was in his first year of uh, at, at Iowa State. He didn't play at all. But I saw guys that he was better than that played over him. Yeah. And played against him, too, actually. I played a lot. So I said to him, that summer, yo, you're going to transfer? Because everyone was transferring. 
everybody's transferring. So I was like, I figure he's gonna transfer, right? Somewhere he's gonna play. He just said to me, hell no, I'm not gonna transfer. I'm gonna work so hard that they're gonna be dumb to not play me. And I think that is. <laughs> you can't take Jeez. no as an answer. Bro. Jeez. Yeah. And again, that's keeping your dream alive. Yeah. Yeah. And not letting it die inside mm -hmm. and taking your situation as a challenge. For sure, Instead of bro. quitting and say, ah, oh, coach this, oh, let me transfer, da 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 da. For sure, bro. Yeah, no excuses. For him and I, that's, uh, he will always be probably, definitely. Uh, like up there one two yeah. hardest working like I've been lucky to coach I've been lucky to coach a lot of like good players mm -hmm. right yeah. mm -hmm. NBA guys team? guys are guys are in the NBA now RJ RJ, he, RJ, RJ works uh, RJ uh, Caleb Houston is an is unbelievably hard is he? working guy. Okay. hold up hold up I like that I like him too. on the bias David Ooh. David if we're going back to them times yeah yeah I was younger than Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just getting into. From what I, for everything I've seen, like Caleb Houston, when he's like, "Can we shoot at like?" I said, "Yeah, 6:45." Like, yo, 6:45, we can start shooting. Yeah. He'd be there at 6:30. So Caleb, so I said, like, yo, let's start shooting at 6:45. He'd be at 6:30, 6:20, or he warmed up, sweating, ready, ready. Amazing. Shout out to Caleb. So then, shout out to him because I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't the most punctual, punctual. Yeah, yeah. I was punctual when it came. Oh, when it came to basketball, you're pretty punctual. But you were like definitely one of the hardest working. Like we'll yeah. always, yeah. we'll come early. We'll definitely stay late, and we'll like, like I said, my shoulders. Yeah, you're yeah, you're very good. Like, again, if we ain't say it enough, man. Shout out to Amir so, Morgan. So you know what? That's shot another shout out big shout out to the man behind the camera today amir morgan Dang. that's my high school coach and your high school coach as well um honestly he's done a lot for my life i remember that fifth year i was going through a lot of rough things and uh he helped me um just get through that year and always stuck um to my uh anything that i was doing he was always for so amir i just want to thank you for that because yeah, to, to piggyback big. off of that real quick, the, the reason I went to St. Martin's and the reason like because we weren't like when you were with these guys, like we knew each other, but it wasn't like, you know, I was a young boy, but yeah. you stamped him. OD. Yeah, to yeah, me. yeah. For it sure. was you that stamped him. Yeah. And I was like, OK, if Coop stamps him of all the guys and shout out to all the bros, you already know what yeah. it is. But you stamped him. And when we first had a real serious conversation because you stamped him, it was yeah, like, yo, OD, bro, I'm all in on what you got to yeah. say. You know what I mean? So like that was. That was sick, bro. Ever since, ever yeah. since man. My, uh, wedding. wedding. <laughs> Yo, Yo, that wedding was crazy. <laughs> and also, I told the girls this today. Uh. It was four days old when you guys came to visit her. Jeez. She was dumb. Wow. Young. That's crazy. Yo, that was the best wedding I've ever been to yeah, in no, my life. Yeah, no, that was life. crazy. That was Yo, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Yo, honestly, Naz, again, thank you for coming. Um, this has been a great conversation. Welcome back anytime. I appreciate you. you, my brother.